my channel. My name is BJ. My business is called Junked Up. I am a furniture painter, maker, creator, and a Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint retailer. And today, we're gonna be making over this little piece right here, and I think we're gonna take it back to basics. Usually I'm doing a whole lot of stuff with blending and layering and crazy color combinations and really pushing the limits of what some of the product can do, but I have decided to take it back to basics, and so we're just gonna do a single color on this one, so stay tuned. Removing hardware is usually one of the easiest parts of the project, but not this time. There were a total of 16 screws, they were tiny, and some of them were stripped, so it took me forever. But that hardware, which is totally awesome, I saved and I used it for something else, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I will show you the creative reuse I did with that hardware. I filled all the holes with some basic wood filler and then decided to use these awesome vintage brass knobs, which in the end I did not end up using and you'll see why when I get to that. After the wood filler is all dry, I sanded back just so everything was nice and smooth and now I can address the rest of the project. First, we clean. I actually mixed up some cleaner that I got at the hardware store here in Copenhagen, which says it is specifically to clean prior to painting. I would recommend using a TSP type cleaner or an ammonia based cleaner to make sure that your furniture is nice and clean prior to painting. Leftover residue from your cleaner could actually make your paint not stick, so it's important to take a clean cloth and wipe down with clean water. With DIY paint, sanding is project specific. I almost always break out my sandpaper anyway because I don't like the little nicks and dings and maybe little splinters of wood on the legs and corners and edges. And since I have my sandpaper out anyway, I might as well just go ahead and give the whole piece a light scuff sanding. DIY paint is an all natural clay and chalk based paint. So that means it has no yucky stuff in it, it's eco-friendly, and contains just nine total ingredients. That also means it doesn't self-level, meaning you can still see brush strokes, and it also means that there may be some slight color variations in your finished project. So for me personally, and my style of painting, and the finishes I like to create, DIY paint is perfect. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. I really do read every single comment, and I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up, or better yet, subscribe. But I'm gonna give you a couple tips for when you're painting with just one color, and you want a smoother finish. Tip number one is your brush. Choose a good quality synthetic bristle brush. Do not use a cheap chip brush. You're not going to be happy. Tip number two is to use long brush strokes all going in the same direction and going with the direction of the wood. Tip number three is to only work the paint when it is very wet. As the paint starts to dry, the more that you work the brush back and forth and keep going over it, the more you're pulling on the paint and creating texture. After measuring to find the center of my tabletop, I laid down one of the parts of the Priya Inlay Stencil from Cutting Edge Stencils. I'll put the link in the description below. It is a multi-piece stencil so you can get lots of different projects out of it. Once you get your stencil where you need it, it is always best to secure it. Some people use a spray adhesive specifically for stencils. I like to use painter's tape if I use tape at all. Usually I just hold it down with one hand, but since I'm showing you good tips on stenciling, I thought I would secure mine down. The number one question I get about stenciling is how to get a crisp image how to not have it look blurry and how to not have that paint bleed underneath the stencil itself. And the key is to have a dry brush. So you wanna add just a little bit of paint onto your brush, blot most of that off on a paper towel, and then go ahead and stencil using either a stippling or swirling motion. Mm -hmm. 
I usually like a faded out stencil look, but if that's not what you're after and you want a crisp, bold stencil, it may take you several passes to get that crisp, bold look. And the key is to do it in layers. You have to do a little bit of paint on the first pass and it will look light. Keep going, just leave the stencil in place and just keep adding additional layers of dry brush paint and you will get that stencil to look more bold. I got a little bit of the tarnished pearl where I didn't want it, so I took a slightly damp cloth and just wiped it away. And now I'm gonna show you two different ways of distressing. You don't have to distress if you don't want to. I know a lot of people don't like it. I actually happen to really like it. It just makes my heart happy. So you don't have to if you don't want to. I chose to do a wet distress on all of these little doodads because it gives a very natural distressed look. By wet distress, I mean just a slightly damp cloth and rub it until the paint comes off. Technique number two for distressing is to use sandpaper. Just note that when you use sandpaper to distress chalk or clay-based paint like DIY, it creates a lot of dust. So if you're sensitive to that, you may want to stick to the wet distress technique. Over the drawer front where I had the stencil, I am using sandpaper because I don't want to reactivate that paint. DIY paint reactivates with water, so if I'm going to do a wet distress and I want to distress my stencil, I'm actually going to smear that paint. I'm throwing in a tip number four for getting a smoother finish with a single color, and that is to take your sandpaper and just lightly rub it over all of the flat surfaces, just like I'm doing here, and that helps smooth out some of those brush strokes. I thought I was being so smart and tapping into like my fifth grade math so that I could do fractions, so I could measure where I wanted to put my knobs. So confident, I drilled the holes, and when I actually put the knobs on and put the drawers back into place, I realized that the placement was off and I didn't like the knobs anyway. So I filled the holes that I just drilled, and then while I set that aside to dry, I'm gonna wax the rest of the piece. Since I am opening up a brand new tin of wax, I thought I would give you a helpful tip. When using wax, best practice is to scoop out wax, stick it in a bowl, and then work out of the bowl. You can always go back and scoop more wax, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. Wax is also great as a lubricant for sticky drawers. I just take a little on my finger, rub it on the rails, and then my drawers slide perfectly. You could wax with a cloth, but I find that using a wax brush is the most efficient and fastest way to apply wax to your furniture. And here is why I suggested to work out of a bowl instead of your wax tin. That is pigment that is being transferred onto your brush and into the wax as you're waxing your furniture. You don't wanna get that into your tin because the next time you go to use your wax, you're gonna have wax that is slightly tinted from the last project that you used it on. I apply my wax in circles, ensuring that I'm getting that wax down in all of those brush strokes, but I do finish up by going with the grain of the wood and going in the same direction that I did my paint strokes with, I do my wax strokes with as well. I just wanna show you the difference in the wax when it is freshly applied and when it has had time to dry. Drawer on the top, wax has dried a little bit. Drawer on the bottom, it has been freshly applied. You can see there's a very big color difference, so don't freak out when you first apply your wax. After my knob debacle with brass knobs that I thought that I loved and then didn't love when I got them on because the placement was wrong, they were too big, didn't like the color, I found some wooden knobs in my stash and so I decided to paint those and stencil those and I think they're going to be perfect. I'm also super proud of myself and I thought that this was brilliant to put the knobs on the paper plate because it was so easy to paint and stencil and wax with the knobs attached to the paper plate like that. Mm -hmm. 
Best practice is to let your wax set up overnight and then come back the next day and buff it with a clean, lint-free, soft cloth. You will notice that there is a little bit of color transfer under that cloth with certain colors. That is perfectly normal and don't freak out and it will stop happening as you buff it. I wanted to show you the difference between buffed and not buffed. So this knob right here, I just finished buffing. You can see it has a nice little shine on it. The knob in my other hand is not buffed and has no shine and is very matte. I do recommend buffing because it takes off any of the excess wax that may be sitting on top that didn't get absorbed into the paint and it just creates this really nice glow. After getting over the trauma and drama of the first knob debacle, I managed to drill holes in the right place and put the new wood knobs on. With an all natural paint that has no leveling agents in it and is clay based, you are going to have natural variations in color. That's just the way it works. At least that's the way it works for me. Other painters and you may even see different results. I did give my entire project a second coat of wax using the same exact process as the first, putting the wax on, letting it dry overnight, and then buffing it the next day. And remember in the beginning of the video I said I had a cool upcycle for the original hardware? Well, there you go. I made a necklace out of it, and I've done this before. And if you have any interest in making your own necklaces, lucky you, I have a video tutorial, and I will put a link to that in the description box below. As always, thank you so very much for spending some time with me today and watching my video. It is so much appreciated. I really appreciate your support and I will see you guys the next time. Bye.